Hey. You want to blow around tree, tree outdoors. outdoors. That's right. That's the same spot in line we'll see. Get it. Bullseye. Six inches left. About a half an inch from the first shot. Three inches left. Baby, you can feel that one. Guys, this is Wade Rush with Bubble Round Tree Outdoors. Always remember when you're reloading that reloading can be hazardous if you make a mistake or don't know what you're doing. So please don't consider what I'm doing here to be load data. If I am using exact load data, I will show you the source and the book. And in this case, we will be using some exact load data out of the Lyman manual, and I will show that, and I will post links in the bottom of the video, guys. So stand by for the reloading segment. Well, hey there, guys. This is Wade Rush, Bubble Round Tree Outdoors. It's time for the reloading segment. And uh, this one was made po possible by Mr. Will Roberts, Tactical 66, right here. I'm going to have a link to his website down here in the bottom of the description. He's got a lot of cool stuff on his website, guys. Um, assembled, uh, he's got almost 80% complete lowers, um, uh, laser sights, military grade, laser sights, and stuff like that. Get by and check him out. So. Let's slug it out here uh, and find out what is more accurate, the Lyman or the Lee drive key slug, guys. Stand by. All right. What we're doing down at the range today is we are actually doing some accuracy comparisons to these two bad boys right here. This is the 525 grain Lyman 12 gauge pellet right here. And for all practical purposes, we're using the Lee one ounce dry key slug 440 grains that's what's on my digital scales right here this one come in at, come in at 524 this at 440 okay we uh in the lineman reload manual loading this 525 grain slug right here they suggested one of the suggestions was the fiocchi straight walled hull and I've got a load of these uh, as a matter of fact guys I have been spending days here in front of the mech decapper resizer right here decapping and resizing thousands and thousands of hulls so uh, if you want hulls that are already decapped and resized and skip that step in your reloading get by the web page here I'm gonna post a link right here and uh, and down here in the description uh, to go by there and check that out. If you need hulls, guys, I've got loads of them in stock. I need to move them out. All right, let's get to reloading. In this test <clears throat> today, guys, we're going to be using the PT ones. This is the PT twelve fifteen, but we'll be using the PT twelve o five seven eighths ounce wad, which is the wad that I have found to be the most accurate with the one ounce drive key slug. Makes a perfect sabo. This PT twelve o five wad right here. But for the Lyman, the Lyman's a little bit longer, so we use the PT-1215 one ounce uh, wide here, and look at how it fits in here. Absolutely perfect. And we're going to be testing 28 grains of long shot and 34 grains of long shot on the range today, guys. The book actually calls for a maximum of 37 grains. So we started at 28, and then we did a segment with 34 grains. All were pretty fairly accurate uh, but uh, I'll let you watch the uh, the range to see what the actual results were but I'm gonna show you how I put together the Lyman um, slug here in these Fiocchi hulls just like the book calls for only we're using a lighter powder charge so I've already got lots of videos on how I put together my one ounce lead drive key slugs and if you haven't seen them I'll try to post the links here for you guys if you haven't seen them but today we're just going to put show you how I put together the Lyman um, slugs for our testing. The book calls for the um, the book suggests the Federal 12 S4, the brown wide. I can't find them anywhere but I had a handful left from some slug testing I was doing a couple of years ago 
So for all practical purposes, to go down to the range today, I was able to do that because I had these slow, uh, these wads on hand. But I'll show you how I put them together in these Fiocchi clear hulls. All right. I've already decapped and resized these. And we're going to use the 2.8 cc dipper. Throws 34 grains of, um, of long shot. So we've got that in our long shot powder right here. Let me get this, let me get this primed up. using Fiocchi primers. The 616 Fiocchi primers, that is also what the book calls for here in the Fiocchi holes. All right. 34 grains of powder. The PT1215 one ounce using the 525 grain Lyman slug, Sabo slug. bad boy started in here bottom it out I like these clear holes because you can actually see what's inside them that's the 34 grain long shot 525 lineman slug using the PT 1215 watt all right, once again, Fiocchi, pull. Get it primed up. A level scoop, like this. And it's right at 34 grains. And then the Federal Wide, the brown. See, that's how it looks inside the brown Federal Wide. Make sure it's down on the powder good. And that's what the finished product looks like using the Federal Wad. All right, folks. It's time to go slug it out down at the range and see which one wins out. Stand by for the shooting segment, guys. Okay, folks, in order to make this is honest to test as we possibly can we've taken the lineman slug first first uh, six we're going to shoot a three shot group of the lineman and a three shot group of the one ounce lead drive key slug difference is, is we got about 525 grains of lineman sabo slug here and 440 grains of one ounce lead drive key slug here um, both in the first shot we're going to be shooting out of the josh is going to shoot the first six shot group out of the 870 rifle choke tube 25 inch barrel the manual actually calls for 37 grains of uh of long shot powder well these first six rounds i loaded 28 grains of long shot powder probably 1200 1250 foot per second and we're using the pt the pt wads which are the most accurate wads we found with the lead drive key slug so that's what we're going to be using for both. Uh, we're going to be using the PT wads, the 1205 for the one ounce, the 1215 for the Lyman Sabo slug here in this first um, two sets of three shot group comparing these two slugs. Okay, guys, stand by. Whenever you're ready, hot dog. Bullseye, 12 o'clock. Dip the top of the bullseye. Almost hit the same hole. Uh, that was a flyer, went high and left. That's still a good group. That's over 12 
video. No, she's taking pictures. <laughs> well, there you got it, guys. There's the Lyman 525 grain. Now she's using the 28 grains of a long shot into PT 1215 wide. That's a dang good group, 51 meters. I'll take a deer out. So now we're going to shoot the Lee Drive Key Slug. Same PT, not the exact same PT wide, but, all, but a PT wide, PT 1205, and the 440 grain or one ounce Lee Drive Key Slug. Stand by. All right, bud, whenever you're ready. Lee Drive Key Slugs out of the 870 with rifle choke too. Yeah, ready? And take your time, Bubba. Yep, go to it. 12 o'clock, right above the bullseye. Uh, 8 o'clock, left of the uh, bullseye. Uh, 4 o'clock, right of the bullseye. Do a circle around it. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the one ounce Lee Drive Key, 51 yards, 50 meters. Um, Josh drew a circle, literally, right around the bullseye, which it, like I said, at 50 meters, if you were shooting that or hunting with that, that's plenty accurate enough to take a deer. But we may be able to tighten them up as we get a little bit more powder in here. Stand by for the second set of shots. All right, for the next set of shots, Hammer is going to shoot the camo stoker with the rifled, with the Hastings rifle choke tube in it. We're a little hotter this time. We're using the uh, 34 grains of long shot powder in this load. And we're still shooting the, uh, the PT wide in the, uh, for the one ounce 440 grain Lee drive key slug. But this time in the Lyman, we're shooting 34 grains of long shot, but we're using, went right by the book, using the Federal 12S4 wide is what Lyman book calls for, and that's what we had the most room for with the 34 grains of long shot. So that's the only difference in these two right here, guys. So let's get to the shots. I don't think we've ever shot slugs out of the camo stoker, so I just hold it, I guess, up. A uh, regular 12 o'clock hold covering the bullseye. Wind's messing with the target a little bit now. That way the chewing impulse is not there. I'm trying to shoot. Oh. <clears throat> All right, we're rolling hammer whenever you're ready. We've got some shadows on the target, but that shouldn't. Hopefully that won't mess with you. hit down into the left uh seven o'clock real close to the same hole you want to run them it may not be hot enough shoot that ain't bad at all There's the Lyman grouping out of the rifled choke tube M3000 Stoger. That's about a three, three inch, three and a half inch group with the Lyman Sabo slug. All right, stand by. We're going to shoot the lead drive key right behind it. Hang on. All right, he's going to do the, the one ounce lead drive key slugs. You see, that's going to be the continuing, a continuation with all six shots. Not wanting, to feed Not wanting to run them. They don't want to feed it. They don't want to feed them. You know, they... It hits and catches on the side. Well, Fiocchi would not be my first choice to use for that, for that kind of stuff, but since that was in the manual, that's what I went with. I'd rather use the Remington, but that was just for test purposes today. All right, hang on, bud. Let me get zoomed up. All right, whenever you're ready. Almost the same spot the lineman was hitting. Did he? Bullseye. And way up high and to the left.
Okay, there's the Lee drive key group. That's going to be about a 7 inch group, 51 meters, out of the rifle choke tube, out of the uh, camo stoger. I know we've done a lot better than that with them, but we weren't using the long shot powder either. But we just stayed with that same powder just for testing purposes today to see how the difference in how the slugs fly. So far, Lyman has won hands down. All right, stand by for the shot side of a smooth bore for the last six guys. The next six shot group, I'm going to shoot two sets of threes out of the black gun. No rifle choke tube, smooth bore. As close to smooth bore as I can get. I got a wide improved cylinder in it at 720 constriction. And we know that cylinder bore in 12 gauge is 729. So that's as close to smooth bore as I could get. It was that improved cylinder at 720. It's a Carlson. And so no twist. We're going to shoot these uh, this last six shot group with the Lyman and the Lee. All right, guys, stand by for the shots. Rachel, we ready to go? All right. Okay, we're going to shoot the Lyman three shot first out of the smooth bore. Looks like it hit it about six o'clock, didn't it, Josh? Yes, sir, about two inches, three inches down. Three o'clock at about four inches. About one o'clock, three inches. Yeah, that ain't, I tell you what though, that ain't terrible out of a smooth bore, is it? Mm -mm. That's pretty dang good. That's as good as the other Stoger did with the rifle. <laughs> okay, smooth bore, 51 yards or 50 meters. That's about a seven inch, seven and a half inch group for the Lyman with 34 grains of long shot using the Federal 12S6, I oh know, 12S4, sorry, 12S4 Federal, the Brown Federal wad. <clears throat> All right, everybody ready? Lee, drive key out of the smooth bore. One ounce, Lee, drive key. Can you see where it hit, John? Right up under the bullseye. Six. Hit the bullseye again at about 2 o'clock. 12 o'clock, about 4 inches. Is it, do we finally have a lead drive key win that round? Looks like it. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at the target here in just a second. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Shoot ya. Yeah. Lee. Lee drive key. I think one finally won our first round. It did better out of the smooth bore than the lineman did with that particular load anyway. No doubt. That's a wrap, guys. This is Wade Rush of Bubble Round Tree Outdoors along with Rachel, Josh, aka Country Boy, and Jake the Hammer Rush. We'll be back with another one soon, guys. Bye-bye.